Hello and a warm welcome to Mining Review Africa and our Women in Mining Women's Month video campaign. I'm pleased to welcome Robin Millett, CEO and founder of OMI Solutions, PTY Limited. Welcome Robin and thank you for joining us. Bonjour, Jumbo, ni hao. Hello from the DRC, Taryn. Lovely. Robin, you have 20 years experience in project management for a suite of environmental projects. Can you tell us more about your involvement in the mining sector specifically? Yes, I was very lucky to start in the mining sector in my safety boots. Um, I was given such a nice compliment this week. Uh, one of the gentlemen bumped into me in the DOC and we'd worked on a mine before and he said to me, oh, you're actually clean, Robin. <laughs> you know, so I'm really used to getting into the operations and fixing something in my safety boots. So I feel very blessed that that's where my career started. I worked with really big mining houses and uh, in-house support. Um, I've also worked for consultancy firms. Um, and then in 2017, I think I hit a bit of a midlife crisis and decided, OK, I'm off to Afghanistan. And I went to work in Afghanistan for a few months and really did realize that I miss mining. So it wasn't long after that, 2018, I opened my company. and. One of the biggest reasons for opening OMI was I'd heard my entire career that my ideas were not something that was possible. So the word no was most likely the word I heard the most. And I, I just wanted to prove them wrong. Uh, and I think we have. We are now in 25 countries in just over five years. Um, with a really good, strong team, and we have a really strong strategy. So we're opening a corporate office in the US, um, and we have really strong guys joining our team. So, yeah, I'm pretty proud of where we are today. Amazing. Okay, so you are internationally recognized for your contribution to science and environmental sustainability, um, having been awarded a fellowship, sorry, a fellow membership with the Institute of Environmental Management and Assessment in 2022. Please tell us more about this and with a specific focus on your involvement in raising the position of and respect for women within the mining industry and your commitment to the professional development of women specifically. So look, one of the reasons why I'm so proud of being recognized internationally is because with this recognition, they never made reference to our gender. Um, and that's really important for me. And it's really important to remind women in mining that you want to be recognized as a colleague, as a peer, and as a scientist. And as a fellow, I've been recognized as a scientist amongst my peers. And that's something I'm very proud of. Um, it was an idea that was born in 2008. And it's something that I spoke about at every operation that I worked on. No one listened to me. Everybody said to me, it's it's not going to work. Um, it's one of the reasons why our research lab is successful today. And um, so that was why I was recognized as a fellow. Um, you know, so I'm just so proud of it because my gender wasn't referenced. Okay, so so just on the back of that, so in your opinion, what challenges do professional women in the South African mining sector face? I think one of the biggest challenges, and it's something that I, I saw throughout my career, and it's something that I, I have seen as, as a CEO and interviewing many people for positions inside of OMI, the, the women do not ask for the same salaries as the men. They typically ask one third of what the men are asking. And I think it's really important for women in my position to mentor younger women and make them aware that if you are capable and you're able to do the same job, then you should be asking for a bigger salary and the same amount um, or the same. I think women are always so. I think. I think we appreciate things and we're just grateful. And sometimes you don't always have to be that grateful. You are worth every penny. Um, and I would love to mentor women, especially with that. And I think that's one of the challenges that we face in mining. 
Okay, absolutely. So, so one of what are some of the lessons that you wish you had learned earlier on in your career? I think again, and that's something I will keep going back to, is that teams are only successful when you have a gender balance and diversity. So you can't just have all women. You can't just have all men. You can't just have one culture or one religion. And something that I always say to my team, which they must remember, is as soon as you realize we're all working for the same goal, you will res respect each other far better. The one thing that all of us relate to is that we have mothers, we have fathers, we have children, we have sisters, and we have brothers. Then gender is out the window. And that's that's completely forgotten. We must respect each other for all of us being in that room, working towards looking after our families. And as soon as people realize that, that we're actually all working for the same thing or towards the same thing, then you respect each other as a professional um, and you just get on with the work. Absolutely. That's a very important analogy that you've just given. Okay, so how would you say does South Africa compare to other countries when it comes to women's representation in mining? Look, I travel extensively. I think I'm more on a plane than anywhere else. I sometimes am on 12 flights in 14 days. And the one thing that I do notice a lot is such a big language barrier. And because there's a language barrier in so many places, people underestimate someone's ability because they're not able to speak English. Um, and I think we really have to make the effort if we are going into Africa or if we are going into a European country is to try at least speak a bit of their language so we can communicate with them. One of the things that I see so often happen is they group ideas or group assumptions from a group. You have to break age groups up. So you've got to speak to older women, younger women, older men, younger men, because you have to understand the different needs. And as soon as you understand their needs, you can help them more. So I think that is the a bigger challenge for me than we face in South Africa. In South Africa, if we are able to speak English, we, we, we really get through things quite easily. Mm -hmm. But anywhere else I travel, I really have to sit long and watch body language and spend time with people and point and draw and <laughs> all sorts of things. And I think if you have that patience, we can really help women in mining across the world. Um, but we really do have to have patience. Okay. All right. So so what, what more should women in positions of leadership in South African mining be doing to assist and support others in the industry, in your opinion? I think you need to remind each other to be kind to yourself. You don't, this is not a competition. You're not on, a, you're not on a race to get to the top. And you also need to be reminded, reminded to be at the top is not so nice. It is lonely <laughs> and you, you are, you are faced with a lot of really difficult decisions that you have to make um, as a team. So I, I really want to say to women, you know, just be kind to each other. Be authentic. You don't need to fit into a mold. So you don't need to walk into a room and be a man. You just have to be yourself. And you have to work really hard. So a lot of, a lot of communication lately is virtual calls or put people sitting in boardrooms or across tables from each other virtually. They're forgetting that it's really important to be on the ground. It's really important to be connecting with each other. And it's really important to understand what season your colleague is in because you're going to have to support them differently in different seasons. Wow. So my biggest my wish for women is to remind them that we have a responsibility to mentor each other. We have a responsibility to remind each other that this is not our time to shine. This is our time to make sure that what we do, we are building a future for both our little boys and our little girls because our children are coming. So I, I, yeah, the biggest one, be authentic and it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to make mistakes. 
just don't do it again. <laughs> Great. And then and focus on that support. I mean, that support structure is so important. Yeah. I mean, if I think about the women that are in my life, um, that are colleagues, it's unbelievable. It's it's almost every country I feel in the world, definitely every continent. And we are supporting each other just by checking in. How are you? Are you okay? What are you, you know, how, how are you managing your things? And it's completely okay to cry. Don't cry in the boardroom. Yes. <laughs> cry in the bathroom. But you're allowed to be human. Um, and you need to surround yourself with friends who don't use it as a weakness because it's not a weakness. Mm -hmm. It really is let people be themselves. And as soon as they feel comfortable in a space, they're going to fly. As soon as they know that you've got their back on your good days and on your bad days, they're also going to support you on your bad days. So it's really look out for each other and be kind to yourselves. That's really the most important thing, I would say, to women in mining. Okay. That's an amazing comment. Right. And then lastly, Robin, so what are some of the key factors that you feel will continue to help you grow and succeed in your career? Oh, um, I think one of my key factors is, and, and I really am good at listening, is I sit and I listen and I don't always have the answer, but I always come back. Um, and I think the flexibility of change, I'm not scared of failing. I'm not scared of going to a new country. So the the key factors as a person is just to have that ability to be flexible. And I'm not scared of someone saying no. I've heard no so many times that I'm completely, it's fine. But I think What's also important for me is to realize that everyone has seasons and everyone goes through seasons. So what's important for me is when someone is in my space or in my team for that season, that I look after them during that season. And in that season, I help them grow to such a point that they fly. And I hope one day they'll be my boss. And I think that's important is that I am so at peace where I am in my life and who I am that I only wish good upon anyone who comes into my circle. And I'm very aware it's just a season. But when we meet in a different season and a different time, all I want is to get excited when we bump into each other at an airport or in a boardroom. And I think that's one of the reasons why OMI is doing so well, is I've built relationships up for 20 years that it is always such a pleasure to walk into any boardroom and bump into any of my old colleagues. Okay. And I, I love your comments about flexibility of change. Um, I don't think I've ever heard that. And that's, that's such a positive take on on change and that we shouldn't be afraid of it. And so that's that's really, Robin, thank you so much for your for your insights overall. Um, and wishing you a thank wonderful, you. wonderful Women's Month. Um, and thank you so thank much, you for being, much for being part of our campaign. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye.